jazzing up your day with a touch of soul. The Living Room on 938 Live. Welcome into The Living Room on 938 Live and it's that time of the year again one inevitably takes stock of one's life and wonders what one can do better in the new year. Sometimes it's hard. Motivation and inspiration don't come in a bottle and sometimes we never get a sip of it if it did come in a bottle no matter what we do. Now how's this for inspiration? He's won six gold and silver medals, broken five world records while representing the USA Paralympic swim team. He's an artist and for over 30 years he's been exhibiting in more than a dozen countries. He speaks Mandarin. How embarrassing for us. Uh, has scaled some of the highest peaks in the world. He's never let his condition get him down. So we able-bodied people really have no excuse. We're with us today, Gregory Burns. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. So getting up early in the morning, no problems whatsoever? Oh, it's very hard for me to get oh, up. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I'm, I, 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 so you are mortal after all. Oh, I'm very mortal, yeah. <laughs> we shall uh, join each other in the imbibing of... Uh, coffee. So Greg, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, tell us a bit about swimming lessons in the White House. That was the first thing that grabbed me when I saw that. Well, actually, my grandfather had done some work for the Eisenhower administration, so now you know how old I am. <laughs> um, and so he actually asked the uh, Eisenhower's personal physician, could I use the White House pool? Because it was the only heated pool in Washington, D.C. at that time. So I had contracted polio in Jerusalem, came back to America, was looking for a pool to really to rehabilitate in and through that uh, connection there we were allowed to swim in the White House pool. So I guess after that the rest they say is history. That's correct, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a bit about why you think people let themselves get into this rut. Earlier I talked about how at this time of the year people tend to take stock of their lives, mm. wonder what went wrong so to speak. Mm. Why do you think people get themselves stuck and are unmotivated maybe and sort of just schlep along? Wow, that's a big question. Um, I think there's some, if I, if I just throw out for a moment a term I've recently re, re or re-looked at, it's called self-actualization. Okay. So what is that? That's kind of making the most of what you have in, in simple terms. So we all have potential, and we all know what we can and can't do. And sometimes we achieve that, and we know it, and sometimes we don't achieve it, and we know it. So I think there are times in our lives where we're looking at ourselves saying, you know, I could have gotten up earlier today and I could have meditated today. I could have gone swimming today before I came to this interview and I would have been much clearer. Or I could have done this and I could have done, been better with my children or <clears throat> I could have done this class better. So I think that that's a healthy thing. I think it's healthy for us to look at ourselves and say, wow, where am I falling short? Where do I know I can do better? And it's not rocket science. I mean, and I think it's a, it's a feeling though. So I think some of the times it's good to take stock to see where we're going and to say, okay, I can do that a bit better. And then not to get overwhelmed by it, but say, okay, so what can I do a little bit better every day? So for myself, I'm, I was a swimmer. I'm still a swimmer. I'm still swimming every day. I don't like to swim every day. I oh, really every, day. every day. I, I like <laughs> to swim now and then. But I know for me, for my condition, for my health situation, I, wanna, I, I need to swim every day. So I force myself to swim every day. Um, so for other people, that might not be the discipline they need. They may, may need to read uh, a chapter in their book every day, or they need to paint a painting every day. Or they, so we all have, you pick your battles wisely. You, you decide what it is that you need, and, and you do that. So it's, it's individual for every different person. I think I'm hearing a bit of myself in what you're saying, too. I mean, what could we, could we have done better? And mm. it's always, the picture's too big. Yeah. And that's how you get overwhelmed, yeah. right? Your whole life is awful instead of But it's not. Just don't eat that donut this morning. Let's have whole wheat toast. Very you know, good. not that your whole life is right. awful. <laughs> okay, so, so so one small piece of toast at a time. Instead of that donut. Exactly. Yeah. So what about your life makes you most proud, you think? Most proud. Wow. Um, because the list of accolades is long and intimidating, like the FBI's most wanted list. What about that list, though? Makes not you being most wanted proud? by the FBI, maybe that's the. Uh, <laughs> but uh, well, recently I've, I've done a number of things, I guess, physically that have, have been challenging. But at the same time, as an artist, I've created some art that I think is is uh, meaningful. And I guess put both of those things together. Um, in June, I did a trek in India, in Ladakh, with a, another fellow who was actually also physically challenged, a, a fellow, fr friend of mine named Paul Fairhurst. And he was living in Singapore three years ago, riding his bike on Holland Road, crashed, broke his neck, no fault of his own, other, other than, and was a quadriplegic. 
and that means quadriplegic means four means he couldn't move basically so neck however, down kind neck of thing. down right he was toast and um not a donut he was toast okay uh, but anyway he after hard work for two years he built himself back up and when i met him two years after the accident he was still walking with a limp but i said hey what happened to you and he told me his story we decided we would do a trek together. Long story short, in June of this year, we did a trek in Ladakh, 35 kilometers over this mountain, these several mountains. He with a cane and me with crutches. Um, and so that was our physical challenge. Um, but along the way, we did a lot of soul searching and talking. At the same time, I was produce, uh, painting a series of four paintings that expressed the challenge, I, I, I would say, and the, uh, the, the meaning of this long trek. So that I was combining the physical, which was climbing four mountains over 4,000 meters um, daily, walking 10 or 12 hours. But then at the same time, when I had some downtime, I was creating these paintings. So putting the physical and the, when I say spiritual, I don't mean it's religion, but my art is more about my heart, about internal things. It's about communicating those more subtler uh, messages uh, that are... An expression of what's going on inside, so to speak. Exactly. And so I was putting the two together. And that's what I guess I, I'm kind of proud of how that came out. What keeps you going, though? I think part of it is if I don't keep going, I beat myself up worse than anybody else. Because honestly, if I don't do something, you'll say, "That's okay, Greg. Just relax. You, you know, you have a disability. Oh. Why? Why? You can say it on the. Ca- but you can you watch have the television. salt who'd go, "No, it's awful. I, my life is over." Not Almost. so much. No, I'd say, yeah, something similar to that, but I'd say... Less dramatic, I, I know, maybe. Maybe. maybe <laughs> but, uh, I'm a Libra, so we're all about balance. But, okay. <laughs> so the, the, the idea that I know I can do better and, and not feeling good about myself, I think that's, that really is part of it. Because really, who wants to not feel good about themselves, exactly. I suppose, right? Yeah. And, and if you can take... Uh, it doesn't take a lot to, to turn the table on that, both ways. I think you can upset yourself and get yourself down very easily. But at the same time, if you take control and you do something you know is good, like for instance, for me, I'm not feeling great or something. I know if I go swim or paint or or write, or do something that I know I'm qual- I'm good at or I like to do, I'm I can change the channel. I can change the weather. I can change my emotion, just like that. So th- I think you can equally go downhill quick, but you can equally go uphill quick and and change your 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 thoughts, change the way you feel about yourself. Because I know. Jump in the pool, 20 minutes later, half an hour later, I'm going, wow, the world's a good place. That's so odd that we don't recognize that about ourselves, the turning it up. Do you not think we do, though? I don't know. Don't you think we know I feel maybe a lot of the times people like to get stuck in this, I'm so miserable, and, you know, it's their own crap, so to speak, at the risk of using a a vulgar word, but it is their own, so Mm -hmm. it smells familiar. True. So to speak, right? Right. Gregory Burns is with us today. We'll chat more with him in just a bit as to how he gets himself going in the mornings, and we need a little help with that. He'll also be speaking with the Titanium Trainer League, and we'll give you details with that in just a bit as to how you can get your tickets. Grab your hands on those tickets. Stay with us on The Living Room, 938 Live. A touch of home in the office. The Living Room on 938 Live. Thanks for staying with us on The Living Room on 938 Live, chattering to Gregory Burns, who's an internationally acclaimed athlete and artist. You wouldn't think those two things would go together, but they seem to do in Gregory's world. He'll tell us more about his art pieces in just a bit. He's got uh, several gold medals. I shan't make you feel bad by naming how many. He's also got an MFA. This is a fine arts, is that right? Master of Fine Arts. In painting, and he's exhibited in dozens of countries over the last 30 years. He's joining us for a chat, and he's also, by invitation of the Titanium Trainers League, speaking at uh, uh, a session on the 29th of January. I'll give you more details in just a bit. So, Gregory, we were talking about uh, that people innately know. They know that they can get themselves out of bad moods. They know that they can put themselves in a better mood uh, really quickly. So, I was a bit skeptical. I am, I suppose, a bit skeptical. Perhaps a quick uh, exercise as to how one person can do that. You talked about it being like a light switch. Yeah, I think uh, um, the the adage... One step at a time, okay? Uh, Rome wasn't built in a day. I didn't get into this mess in a day. Um, whether it, or <laughs> I didn't get fat in a day, exactly. so you've got to give weight loss a bit of time too. Exactly. Right, and, right. And, and you didn't learn um, Mandarin in a day. You didn't learn to paint in a day. So everything takes um, some incremental daily activity. And I think that's where we get kind of lost. Is that, um, Why do you think, though, people are so impatient then? 
They well, want to see those results immediately. Maybe it's, we can and, blame it on the medical community. I don't know, because people, here, here, take this aspirin and you'll feel better. Right. Well, you know, if you look at t- Chinese medicine, it's, you know, have years this. And years years yeah. and years. Yeah, or weeks and weeks, let's say. So I know for myself, if, if I'm, if things are not going well, life seems to be upside down, uh, pear shape, whatever you want to call it. I know that um, it, it, it's easy to say this now because I'm not staring it in the face. But I know that if I take a little step every day or every hour or whatever that discipline is, that slowly I know I, I can get myself out of it. Now, of course, there are deeper holes that we get into, for sure, and it takes longer to get out of. And sometimes you need help from outsiders and you need you know, some external support. Of course, those are all part of it. But I think we have to take the first step. We have to know, and we n- do know, I, I, could, I know I could do this now, so do it. Don't just say, I know I could do this now. And, and then not don't do, do anything. Yeah, so, so that's, <laughs> I think, and that's charged. just called self-discipline. Right. And, and, and we all have it. We all have self-discipline. It's just, you know, how much do we let ourselves down? I think it's perfectly okay to live this extraordinary life. Just go do that. Why, why do you want to help people, though? Hmm, never thought of that. I don't know. It's just part of my nature to communicate. You know, I, I think I was a... If I, if I could, I'm a communicator and a transportator. I mean, what does that mean? Yeah. I, I like to get around. <laughs> I like to move from A to B, you know, without fossil fuels. So I like to hike or scuba dive or surf or swim or whatever. So that's part of me. That's the one side is the mover, the you know, inspiration and motion, if you will. And the second part is to communicate. And, you know, I have a BA in communications and a MFA in, in painting. And so, and I write and I speak and I paint. And I often feel that I don't know really what all I know until I write it, speak it, or paint it. And that's, I think, a gift that whether it's something, well, the the, the jury is still out if I have anything worth saying, but (laughs) uh, the the, the part of me wants to communicate those inner things that are, that that aren't about shopping, that aren't about uh, making money, that aren't about uh, the, I don't want to say the mundane bits of life, but the parts that move us closer to our bliss to move us closer to what's really important in our lives where we want to be i suppose one would have to figure out first where they want to head yeah that's probably helpful i I wouldn't put that as a barrier like i don't know where i want to get like so never mind i won't go anywhere i'll be speaking at sota (laughs) next week and and these are young people young artists and i'll say to them look you may not know what you want to do you you're in the arts you could be in you're in drama or dance or music but Look, your your journey as an artist or a musician or, or an actor is going to go in many different directions. And you're going to need to be open to say, okay, I thought I was going here, but, you know, now I'm going in this direction. That's okay. I'll, keep, I'll go with it. So, so be aware of where you are and not just follow a rote thing. Uh, like the Dalai Lama has once said, you know, he, it's not about following mantras. It's not about repeating prayers mindlessly it's about living this moment as it comes so when i came in here today i had no idea what i was going to talk to you about other than a little bit but so as you go down the street you know you have a left or a right or an angle that you're going to take or not so it's being present it's being awake alive uh, in tune with yourself to say right i have all these options i think this one's probably better for me so i'll take this one and you don't know all the answers but I have. I just did a painting, or in one of my paintings, I wrote it, going without knowing all the answers. So we don't know all the answers. How can we know all the answers? So you get to a point where you go, okay, I think, I feel, I sense I should go this way, and then go that way and go with it. Because there are so many options, so many questions, and we can't have all the answers before. So you're going to have to trust yourself at some point. And the more you do that, you more go, hey, I came out in a good place. Hey, I made the right choice. Hey, that was the right... Good. I like this. And so you kind of build on your your wins. wins. Yeah, exactly. And that helps you on the long term. Sounds good. You'll be speaking at the invitation of the Titanium Trainers League on the 29th of January. Maybe a sneak peek. What's going on in your talks usually? A, a little of what we just talked about. I okay. think there's some of this, but of course more. Um, down the donut. <laughs> One. <laughs> well, get down the door. Yeah, that could be part of it. But I think it's also um, people often come to me and say, "So I want to get fit. I want to. I want to." And they say, "You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start swimming, uh, running ten miles a day, starting tomorrow." I said, "You know, yeah, I have an idea. Maybe Why don't you two. Just, yeah, and every other day." You know, so let's break it down into bite-sized, manageable pieces. Because if you throw up this gauntlet for yourself, which you're not going to attain, like my New Year's resolution. 
last year was to drink only one day a week. Okay. Not that I have a drinking problem, but my thought was, okay, I don't want to quit drinking altogether because I enjoy a glass of wine now and then, but it's not going to be so dramatic. So instead of no drinking, okay, one day a week, that means I can drink within a 24-hour period. So th <laughs> that was a good little discipline. So did I only drink 52 times this week? Yeah, give or take. I think maybe I... This year. This year, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Not this week. Yeah, this, I've got this image <laughs> of Gregory on Sundays just... <laughs> Have at Pounding. it, you know. <laughs> but, but that was an example of, of an attainable discipline, if you will. So let's, let's discipline ourselves, not just too easy, but also not too hard. So make it real for yourself. What is for you, the do put down the donut, okay? What is for you a good training regime? Whether it's to do sports or whether it's to do your homework or whether it's to do your paperwork or whether it's to get that pilot's license or whatever it is. So make goals that are stretch goals, but attainable goals and not too easy, not too hard. Just like the, the Goldilocks, not too, the porridge was not too hot, not too cold. It was just, just right. right. Sounds good to us. So if you want to know more about what Gregory will be talking about, you'll need to get tickets. 29th of January is when it'll be. Go to the website ttleague.com. That's T-T-L-E-A-G-U-E.com. Gregory, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you can you. always find out more about Gregory as well. GregoryBurns.com. He swims, he paints, he speaks Mandarin. He'll have a conversation with you in Mandarin, I'm sure. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Looking at life from a different perspective. The Living Room on 938 Live.